Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, hi, welcome back to Impital MOOCs course on developing soft skills and personality. This is the eighth week, the last week of uh, this course and this is module number one, lecture number 43. This week I am going to start with presentation skills. Most of you have been eagerly awaiting for uh, these modules which are on presentation skills and I am going to start with the most important thing which is not letting you become a good professional presenter that is overcoming fear and how to develop confidence in terms of public speaking as well as presentation skills. Now, before I start, let us take a quick review of what I did in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, I focused on body language for interviews. I started by saying that body language for group discussions are similar to the ones we studied for interviews such as your appearance, your attitude, personality and positive outlook. They are all important as far as interviews are also concerned. Dress, topmost uh, important aspect of body language and then I discussed about various do's and don'ts you should do in terms of dress. The most conservative and uh, the less uh, decorative is the one that will be most appealing. Handshake should be firm handshake, neither this uh, 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 the dead fish or nor this uh, knuckle grinding handshake and body language in terms of posture, in terms of maintaining eye contact etcetera should be perfect. Enthusiasm just like interview should be maintained from the beginning till the end. I also discussed uh, various aspects and compound, uh, components of uh, group discussion which are again uh, related to uh, interviews. In, in this case, I told you that the topmost qualities which are all related to body language and soft skills in interviews or except maybe uh, two, three. So, the maximum topmost skills such as leadership, such as personality. So, they are all related to body language and soft skills. And even the evaluation criteria which I discussed, I try to highlight to you the fact that they are actually based 75 percent on soft skills and body language. Only 25 percent is uh, uh, the weightage is given to subject knowledge. So, later I progress to discuss with you the don'ts and do's you should keep in mind. Particularly what should you not be doing? You should not be anxious in order to talk too much or you should not become nervous and talk too little. You should not show aggressive behavior, you should also not use any arrogant gestures. No distractive body language such as biting nails, picking nose, shaking legs or even playing with pen, playing with button, playing with hair. Okay. All these things which are distractive should be completely avoided. In terms of do's, maintaining eye contact is very powerful, effective. Even if there are many people in the group, it has to be done in a kind of uniform manner. You have to alter the eye contact, especially when you talk to people. Using eye contact, you can also show that you are appreciating somebody, you are in approval of some ideas combined with smiling and then you should also try to remain cheerful throughout. In the entire GD, try to use gestures which are open, particularly the open palm gestures indicate that you are a very frank and honest and open minded person. Walk upright and then sit tall and then while talking slightly lean towards the other speaker to show that you empathize and then you show some kind of agreement and acknowledgement with what is being discussed. Occasional nodding to show agreement will also uh, make you a very likable person in uh, both uh, GDs as well as in uh, interviews. Okay. Now, I told you that at the end of uh, both the discussion on interview as well as on GD, both of these uh, activities are done 
conducted, performed in order to select you for a post. Maybe it is the first post that you want or maybe it could be a post that you want at a higher position. Now, in both cases, the most important point you should keep in your mind is that do not develop body language overnight. Even thinking that you will develop overnight is a faulty misconception. And then the post that you need demands certain kind of body language, demands certain kind of refinement in the way you present yourselves. So, you need to assume those qualities, imbibe them in your body language and you assume the personality needed for the job even before getting the job. So, that way you are prepared and you show your preparedness and the people either in the interview or in the group discussion panels, they will be very impressed and they will be compelled to select you. So, with those tips, I concluded the previous lecture. Now, in this one, let us look at the next important aspect of uh, developing your uh, personality using soft skills as well as uh, body language is with regard to public speaking skills, presentation skills okay, and to be precise oral presentation skills. But the most important thing for all of you is that you are afraid of giving even small presentations. How can you overcome this fear in oral presentation. Many of you would speak effortlessly in informal situations. For example, in the canteen, if you are supposed to give a talk, you can give a talk. In a uh, party where you know all the people, most of them are your friends, relatives or people whom you like and then you chat freely, you give a review of a movie you have seen. You speak for hours together effortlessly, even uh, without even proper planning, you are able to give such wonderful talks. But you can do that for hours, but I ask you to give a 10 minute presentation before an audience of 50 or 100 people, even they are your classmates or your colleagues, will you be able to do that? Now, most of the people in informal situations, they do not think about it and then they talk fearlessly. But when they are asked to give a presentation in public before people, they turn out to be a jelly, they just shrink and then they are so afraid of uh, facing the public. Most of the times when you become a professional, you will be asked to give oral presentation of a report or oral presentation of a proposal. Now, most of the times you will be marketing a product or you will be describing a new business proposal or you will be describing something about what you have done in your life and career, what you have done in developing a lab, what you have done in conducting an experiment, what you have done in doing a project. So, in all these cases you are supposed to give a small presentation. Now, in modern times you are allowed to give this using a PowerPoint presentation those days we were using blackboard. Nowadays, you have the whiteboard and even in which you can still uh, use the board. Overhead projectors are used in some uh, old institutions in some places till now, but then it is completely replaced by PowerPoint presentation today. There are other uh, speakers who are very good in using just handouts or handwritten notes. They have the so called cue cards, small cards they note the keywords and then they are able to give very good oral presentation. So, oral presentation is all about that, that you have done something and then you have to just give briefly about what you have done, maybe 6 months, maybe even if you are doing a PhD, you have done it for 4 years to 6 years and then finally, you have to give this oral presentation about what you have done for this much time. But having done this much, why are you so afraid? And even for a simple talk, why are you so afraid? Why are you afraid of facing the public? Some people think that it is because uh, if you have to give a speech in English, you are from Hindi or you are from Marathi or you are from any other medium other than English. So, you have the fear that because I do not speak this language, I may commit lot of mistakes. But the fact is, 
not only for an Indian Hindi speaker, but also for an American, the greatest fear is public speaking. Many people will avoid public speaking and even uh, it says that uh, uh, their fear for certain other things which we normally think uh, uh, should come before public speaking, actually they come after. When you are asked to give an oral presentation, which is a formal act of public speaking with a definitive communicative purpose in mind. Sometimes in public speaking, the communicative purpose is not very clear. So, the politician comes and talks, sometimes uh, says against some party or tries to project something, but in oral presentation, the purpose is very clear. So, you give a proposal and then you get some fund, you give a presentation and then there are people to assess you and give you some degree or give you some grades. Now, in such case the fear, so there is this fear that chokes your throat, even sometimes you feel words are not coming out, you sweat, so hand is becoming wet and then it is becoming like a dead fish and then you feel that the heart beat is increasing and then the entire body is becoming shaky it is very nervous. So, the legs are not uh, standing firm, you feel like fainting okay, and you are afraid that any time you may faint before others and it will look like a public shame and the legs get wobbly. So, they are not able to stand firm. Now, why it is happening and then why is this fear only for you or is that felt by so many other people? As I said, even for somebody who speaks English like an American, public speaking is a fear that is on the top. So, there is a book called the book of lists. So, in the book of lists, the book lists the greatest fear okay, and of the greatest fears that people have, speaking before a group is the number one fear of Americans and you will be even surprised to know that death comes in seventh. People are afraid of death only after the six items which precede it and of the six other items you have snakes, you have insects and on the top you have uh, public speaking. So, even for a native speaker, so the fear is there in terms of public speaking. So, it is irrespective of any language. So, language is not the actual barrier. Most of you think that language is the problem, that is why you are afraid of giving talk. That is not the problem. The problem is in your mind, in your psyche, in your thinking. So, why do people fear? The first primary reason is that people fear humiliation, that I will be made fun of, I will be put to shame when I commit a mistake when I make some grammatical errors, people will laugh at me. So, I am I'm such a big fellow, I have created such a terrific impression about me, but when I go wrong in that pronunciation, will not people make fun of me? And if I go wrong in that fact and people will criticize me, okay, and then where is my respect, where is my ego? So, I cannot face them after that. So, this is fearing humiliation that you will be ashamed in public. The next reason for the fear is unfamiliarity with the situation. You speak with people, you express your ideas, okay, but in small group. On phone, you have no problem. When you have to write something using chat without seeing the person on Facebook or emailing, you have no problem, but when you have to see people face to face before you and they are in big groups, then you have problem. With small groups, again you do not have a problem. So, that unfamiliarity you are not used to. From our birth, we are not actually talking to thousands of people all the time. We are all the time talking to individuals, small in number, hardly one or two people at a time. So, that is the reason that unfamiliarity with the situation is also giving you some kind of intimidation. And then there is another thing 
that is a psychological misperception in most human beings who fear public speaking is that the sense of nagging sense of uncertainty that something would go wrong. So, if I give a talk that mic will not work, so my powerpoint will not work, something will go wrong if I give the talk. So, why should I give that? So, I am not good at doing that, I am not lucky in giving good talks. So, these are mind prohibiting thoughts and then I will tell you how you can overcome uh, these ones. This fear is uh, called as stage fright. Okay. So, this is not only to do with people who are going to give a talk, but anybody who has to come and perform on the stage, be it a dancer, be it an actor. The famous uh, Shakespearean actor Laurence Olivier, when he was giving maybe his uh, thousandth performance or so of uh, uh, Shakespearean play Hamlet. So, people asked him, one of the interviewers, he asked him like whether he was having fear. He said, of course, yes, but those are in the initial moments. Okay. So, even a seasoned experienced actor okay, who can speak the language well, who knows the dialogue by heart has some fear okay, maybe of the uncertain, okay, maybe of some uh, kind of psychological intimidation and that is normal. Okay. So, what is important is you should be confident. So, even when he was having that slight fear, he was very confident that he will go and he will manage and then he will emerge successfully. That is because he has this positive self image. So, having a positive self image that whatever circumstance it may be, so, once I have decided to give a talk, I will give and whatever happens, I will come out of it because what others still do not matter for me. If I feel good about what I did, so that is fine. So, that is positive self image and avoid self underestimation that I am bad, I am low, I cannot do this. Also, you should avoid comparing yourself with others. So, thinking that she speaks better, okay. her vocabulary is far superior than me. Oh, he has a very commanding voice. She has a good personality. So, even if she says uh, wrong things, even if she commits errors, people will not notice it. But when I do that, people will notice it. So, that is comparison. But how you can overcome this? if you are determined to do something about this fear that whatever happens, I am going to master this okay. and I will do something little bit each day to overcome this fear. So, start practicing at a small informal level, prepare, give a small talk for 3 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 1 hour presentation, thoroughly prepared one then feel free, anybody is asking you for a presentation, anytime you can give. But at the beginning, you should try to volunteer, even if people are not calling you. If you are in a class, if the teacher is asking somebody to give a small presentation, just raise your hand and then you volunteer. You will start getting the inner energy once you volunteer. So, things will fall in place once you agree to do something. But once you shy away from that, you are not going to escape that fear factor. Keep in mind, as I had discussed before, this interesting hormone adrenaline secretes in our body only during fight or flight response. Either you have to run away or you have to choose to confront. So, only when you give that kind of response the adrenaline forms in your body, gives you a lot of energy and then you are able to do your best, much better than what you actually thought yourself to be. When you choose to fight and give a talk, instead of running away from the talk, instead of bunking the class when your presentation turn comes, instead of uh, 
giving all lame excuses that your throat is not good, fever is there, stomach pain is there and running away from that. If only you choose to fight and then go to the stage, face people and give the talk, that adrenaline will secrete and then you will get that energy and then you will become confident after 2-3 minutes. Once you, once you realize, okay, I am able to stand before people, so the confidence will come and familiarize, experience, practice, do that again and again. After some time, people will tell you, oh, the word that you used, unimaginable, the word choice that you made, how did you do that? So, you realize that, oh, did I speak like that? Did I use that word? Even I did not plan before, but how did that happen? Adrenaline helps you to take out what is called as passive vocabulary in you and it will activate that. That is, what is unutilized in your subconscious mind will be activated to your conscious mind when this adrenaline is there. So, every day you are listening to thousands of words, okay, of which 10 words you may remember, 5 you may use, 1 or 2 you may continue to use. Okay. Maybe those two words you continue to remember, but there are some eight, nine words which are lying dormant in your mind, not utilized, but when such a situation comes where you push yourself and then you confront your fear, it will come out. The other interesting thing about uh, giving talk and why you should not so much bother about other people is that people are buried in their own thoughts and insecurities. How many times you have worn new dress and then stood before somebody and asked, do you see any change in me? So, they say, oh, what change? I do not see anything. So, you have to tell, I am wearing a new dress okay? or I am uh, using a new uh, pen or something. So, they do not watch you. And especially in a situation, in a classroom situation for example, the teacher has asked each one of you to give a talk for 5 minutes. When you are giving the talk, a class of 40, you started and you are thinking that all the 39 people are looking at you and then scrutinizing you and trying to just scan and get out the wrong things from you, you should be completely wrong. You must realize the fact that they are all absorbed in their own thoughts. Some of them are not actually even bothering to listen to you. They are just creating a post that they are looking at you, but they actually do not listen, they just hear. Why? Because in their mind, they are just thinking, oh, my turn will come next, my turn will come next. So, what should I say? How should I? Even a simple thing like introduce yourself first day how fearful it is for some students. So, when each one is uh, uh, doing it, so immediately somebody is noting, what should I say? Oh, I should follow oh, like that girl, I should use that phrase that guy used and they note it sometimes, they keep rehearsing in their mind, but off of the time, they do not even pay attention to what others are telling. So, people are generally buried in their own thoughts and their own insecurities. They themselves are afraid, what will I do when my turn comes? Okay. So, they do not even notice when you are nervous. So, you should not think that they are observing me, my legs are shaking, I am holding a paper and that paper is shaking and that is giving me a kind of nervousness. Actually, people do not even see that the paper is uh, shaking. In fact, when you, when you feel nervous, when you shake, your legs are shaking, you just tell your inner mind that be cool, I will finish it and then only I am leaving. So, you finish it and then go and ask some of your friends, did you see that I was shaking little bit? Almost all of them will tell you that we never saw that, you are so confident. Okay. So, try that. And there are three secrets to banishing your fear. If you are really serious about banishing, abandoning, throwing that completely out of your mind, out of your dictionary, out of your vocabulary. The first and foremost thing for which nobody else can help you, only you can do about it is know your subject. When I say know your subject, it means know your subject thoroughly. The famous writer Mark Twain 
So, he was asked to give an impromptu speech. Okay. Impromptu speech is just you come and give a talk without any preparation. He said he needs at least a week's time to give the talk. So, people are quite surprised for an impromptu you need this much time. Any talk that you give, if you know the subject thoroughly, confidence will come automatically. Okay. Knowing the subject thoroughly and reading it again and again, memorizing, taking notes, keeping notes in your hand just in case you forget. So, that is going to give you utmost confidence. And then the next one is close to knowing that it is believing in your subject. So, you are asked to give a talk about let us say global warming, climate change and then you prepared thoroughly all scientific facts, all facts which are available, but actually you feel that uh, you do not believe in that okay. and when you do not believe in that your subject will not have the conviction in your audience and the audience will feel sleepy. You would not know why they are not showing interest. That is because they know that your thoughts, your ideas are not getting expressed through, through your inner heart. The passion is missing. So, you have to believe that. And knowing the subject, believing, then the next secret to banishing fear is practice, practice, practice and keep on practicing. There is no shortcut. The more you practice, before the mirror, recorded once, videotaped once, okay. keep watching it again and again, memorize it, know it by heart. Even if you are woken up at sleep and then they are asking you to tell it, you should be able to tell it. Keep the points at your fingertips. Now, if that is there, which comes out of thorough practice, repeated practice, absolutely there will not be any fear. But as I said, there will be some slight initial fear, although I say that you can overcome that. But that as I said, it will go once you start delivering and once you get a grip with your audience. So, that fear, the initial one is slight anxiety that is there. How can we reduce that anxiety? First and foremost, visualize your delivery visualize, imagine that at the end of it, the audience are going to give you a standing ovation. They are going to price you for giving that great talk. People are going to clap. Okay. Your most favorite person who is sitting in the audience is going to come and shake hands with you. You feel so encouraged. So, visualize your delivery that you are giving the most successful talk and people are so happy and then they come and then congratulate you. Visualize positively. Do not visualize any negative uh, thinking. Think that you are going to give that best talk and then know your subject. Respect preparation. So, we, in order to know the subject, you have to prepare thoroughly. Know who are the audience, what are their interests and then accordingly you prepare. And while doing that practice presentation, even just imagine that you are giving before the audience, you collect some dummy audience, your friends, your brothers, sisters, relatives and then give talk. When you do that and actually when you go and give the talk there, relax your mind. Do not let any negative chatter come in your mind, okay. relax it. And overall respect your audience. Do not waste their time. Okay. Just whatever you say should be interesting. Even a single word should not be wasted in your presentation and the audience should feel like coming and listening to you again and again. So, that happens only when you are thoroughly prepared and when you care for the audience, their time and you realize that their time is precious and if something they can get from Wikipedia. So, why should they come to you? And they should realize that if I go to this person, I know that this person is respecting my time 
and then even if I spend 10 hours reading something, I can get from this person in just 10 minutes. So, if I go, time is gained, not wasted and so much time is gained. So, if you can give that guarantee, so you will become a very successful and popular speaker. Now, having said this, when you overcome the fear slowly, preparation, practice, knowing the subject and handling the fear by visualizing, the next stage is mustering up courage, developing courage. You will build up confidence by remembering that you are presenting to your friends. Okay. Most of the times, people know that it is difficult for all of them and they will be very happy if you are uh, giving the presentation instead of uh, forcing them to do that. So, if the teacher has selected you, they are happy that the teacher has spared others. So, they are happy you are doing it and in class, you are actually presenting to your friends. They are not enemies except in rare unknown situations, there may be one or two people who act like your enemies or who are who hate you, they do not like you, they are bent on asking troublesome questions when you give the talk. Now, those people can be handled if only you know for sure that you have prepared thoroughly and nobody can catch you. So, that is where thorough preparation comes for your help, but otherwise you are presenting before the friends and you know that you are all in this together, you are all sailing on the same boat. And as long as you prepare properly, your examiners, whether it is PhD, VIVA, MTech thesis presentation, BTech presentation, whatever presentation you give, they will realize this from your performance and reward you accordingly. And if at all you feel choked, so you take one or two minutes and then breathe deeply. Okay. They also say that uh, before interview, before public speaking, this roving technique also helps. Okay. As if you are roving, so you are just rowing a boat, you are just inhaling and exhaling. Some people even in three times deep inhaling and exhaling, they feel free. Some people need five times, ten times, do the time you require, but breathe deeply. So, that actually will unnerve your anxiety. And as I was telling before, the first few minutes are the worst, if it is a long talk. In some cases, it is just few seconds, even by one minute or so, you will just muster up courage and then you will develop confidence. So, once you develop confidence, then you are now prepared for giving a professional talk. Now, that I will discuss in the next lecture, but before I leave you, I just want to give a quote from another analytic development book writer, Zig Zagler. So, he gives an interesting inter interpretation about fear. He says, fear has two meanings. One is forget everything and run, forget everything and run, that is running away from this situation, not giving the talk at all or face everything and rise. Okay. And if you are a leader in GD, you will rise. If you, if you are really born to change people using public speaking, you will again rise. So, you have to decide whether you want to run or rise, the choice is yours. I hope you will decide to rise and with best wishes for you to rise in your career, in your life. I end this lecture. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next lecture. Have a nice day.